Hello Internet! I'm Hamster Bomb, and you are back for some more comic book review videos. And this time, I'm going to be looking at a series that I've been putting off, honestly, for a long time now. I knew we really wanted to do it, but the thing is, I just really wanted to wait a bit, because this is such a huge, huge comic, and it is so important to the industry, and the thing is, it has a really bad reputation, so I knew it would be very, very difficult to get my precise opinions about it in one video across, and I want to do it quickly and well, and I know I'm probably not going to do that at all, but I'm going to do my absolute best for you. Also, I'm going to keep this spoiler-free, because I want this to be a video to let people know, hey, there is this really amazing graphic novel out there, and it has a lot of bad reputation. I'm going to try and clear those things up, let you know, like, why it would have gotten those reputations, and what it is in this comic, movie, or any incarnation you want to see this thing in. And I want to see, um, like, the best way that I can put that out there in a spoil-free way to see if you would honestly be interested in reading it. And now, obviously, what I'm talking about, as you can see above, is Watchmen. Now, this is such a huge comic, like I said. So, so huge in this industry. This is a 12-issue story collected in one graphic novel. You're probably not going to see it collected in those single issues anymore, unless you're at a comic convention and you see them out and about. But anyway, this is a comic by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, I believe, unless I just, yep, yeah, oh, just wong it, knew that. Alright, so anyway, Watchmen is so, so huge. I mean, like, I really cannot even begin to talk about the content of the story because it is so deep. So much thought is put into this. Alan Moore puts so much effort into his characters and his story, and this is, I'm not kidding, this is his, I, I can easily say this is his um, best work he's done, his most popular work, definitely. And um, a lot of people know this because of a movie that discredited it a lot. So let's at least take a look at the comic itself first, because this really, uh, truly is an amazing comic, and I really want to um, justify that. Now, I was a lot like you back in the day, like a few years ago, and I was intentionally avoiding Watchmen. I heard too much about the movie, and all I knew was... Uh, uh, just long, boring, and a blue penis. That's all I knew. I'm not even kidding. So, now, I went into that, just keeping that in my head, like, ah, I'm gonna ignore that, I'm gonna ignore that. It's really easy to ignore one comic when there's so many out there, other ones that you can choose from. I'm like, I don't care. Why would I, why would I waste my time on that if I already know that, I already know that it's bad, right? Everyone else tells me that it's bad. And, oh my gosh, I am so glad that a uh, friend of mine talked me into finally getting into the series, and it finally was not with the comic itself. Because a lot of people will discredit the movie or blame the movie for being very poor. And I'll get to that later. I actually don't agree with them completely. But the thing is, I didn't watch that movie first. Now, if I watched the movie th first, I might have a different opinion. But honestly, the first thing he told me to do was actually get this, which is the motion comic. Now, at the time, I was really not a fan of motion comics either. So I went into this thinking, I, I don't really care for motion comics. I'd rather just read it. I don't need someone to read it to me. It's like an inadequate animation, you know? It's like they're not really flat, but they're not really moving, and now there's voices, and nothing's really lining up, and it's all one voice actor. It's just peculiar to me, you know? So, I go through this, and it's extremely long. And what I'm really just getting out of this is, like, an, uh, a version of the comic of, like, a very pure expression of what it would have been if it was turned into a film. And it's way too long for a film, because there's so much content in this, it can't possibly be put into a film. I want to see if I can quickly find the uh, length of this thing on here, but it's, it's, it's extremely long. Uh, 325 minutes. Now, that might be counting some bonus content, but not much, because that's a lot. I can already hear a jingling in there. There's at least two discs in this thing. Yeah, there's two discs in this thing. It's, it's huge. One comic. Twelve issues. Now, that is basically... All of this. Now, I don't know if I completely agree with him whether that was the best place to go, but the thing is, I kind of think it was because I wasn't watching the movie and I wasn't reading this book. The thing is, that means I wiped away all those uh, those preconceived uh, notions that it was bad because of certain reasons. I was just seeing a different medium completely. And I think that's what he was trying to get me to bypass, and good thing he did, because then I later got the book to read it, finally. And it was another amazing experience, because it was completely different. The way that panels are interacting with each other, and colors are, like, organized throughout the pages, it's just so brilliantly done. There's so much craft put into this. Ignoring, I'm completely ignoring how 
finely tuned the plot is. Now, if I'm going to very, very briefly and not spoil anything about the plot, basically, this is a world where people have had a bunch of superpowers, per se, or decided to dress up and be like superheroes and protect the city. It's kind of like a, a mock on the DC Marvel of the day, but the thing is, this is all after that whole era kind of ended. No one's really doing that anymore, but now they've got like, um, like older people who used to be superheroes, and they're all kind of like friends, sort of. Some of them are, they have odd relationships with each other, and what really triggers the events of the story is one of them is murdered, and no one else seems to believe uh, one other character about why this happened, and he kind of goes on his own to try and figure out why, and that is the beginning of the story. Now, I know that doesn't really sound too exciting. Like, I've told several people about that beginning premise, and they're like, that doesn't sound that interesting. I don't really care, because I've seen enough superhero stuff. Guys, I can't tell you why this is good. It's one of those things. I can't say it. If I did, it would ruin everything. It is so brilliantly done. You get into every character's mind. It is... there's so much put into this book that I really cannot explain why it is so good. And you just have to trust me, guys. This is a, an amazing comic. And if you can't just find this somewhere in the dollar bin at like a half price books, which is exactly what I did, because this thing is, uh, I don't think there's a price just stuck on the back of this thing, but it was, I probably spent like a dollar, actually no, a friend of mine gave it to me for free, that's how much he wanted me to read this, or watch, read, experience it, I don't know, and then from there I ended up buying the book. Now, the story itself. Just from those two alone, I highly recommend either of those. And as I said before, I'm going to have to get to this movie, because that's how everyone actually ended up really... It hit a different audience. It's not how everyone experienced this. Obviously, it was a very, very popular and very influential comic when it came out. And the thing is, the movie was the same as a film, and it hit different people and had a different reaction, because there's one huge problem that you just cannot translate. One, there's a lot of ingenious ways of how the uh, two different comic stories of, like, what's going on and, like, someone else's readings can, like, overlap and you're hearing different things as you're seeing different things, and it's, like, an inexplainable, like, combination of words and pictures to where the story is, like, telling multiple meanings at the same time, and you go back and forth and you're like, oh my gosh, this means this, I, I get that, and he did this, and, like, oh, but, but this means this because he's reading this, and th there's so much going on in every panel, and you can't do that in a movie, unfortunately, because you really need to stop and spend time with every panel in this comic, and it's huge. So you, you don't even feasibly have the time to do it, and even if you bypass the waiting period of panels and put it in a motion comic like that, like I said, 325 minutes. You can't do that in a film. So that's already a huge disadvantage it had, and fortunately, um, from all the special features things I've watched about the film, the people behind it knew that going in, and they actually spent a ton of effort being as true to the book as they possibly could, because they already knew a lot of people are really invested in this, and they really enjoy it. So, which brings me to the film itself. Now, I, re I watched the director's cut, because as I already heard, these people were really dedicated to making this, and they spent a lot of time, and there was a lot of stuff that was cut out. Now, I've seen the other version, just the theater version, and I do have to say, this one is phenomenally better. One, because more content you can shove into Watchmen that you're basically taking from the book, the better. Because it needs so much. And you're kind of cutting seriously important content if you decide to start cutting things to fit it into a theater. And that's unfortunate. And from what I've seen, they cut the wrong things, and they kept some things that, honestly, didn't even need to be taken from the book. Some things that were just kind of like uh, developing something that didn't even happen in the film, because it was in the comics. So, some things seem to be chosen uh, seemingly at random, because the person who, uh, the people, really, who make the movie are not the same people, necessarily, who edit it down for a theater, which is very unfortunate, because there is a different level of who is really determined to make this a good film. So, if you're going to watch it, watch the director's cut, is basically what I was trying to say right there. Now, if you're going to be watching the director's cut, there's a lot of other things that you're going to be missing out on. One of the stories that I was saying before is actually going to be inter twining with the story of Watchmen is the story of the Black Freighter, which um, is actually told through a little boy on the street who's reading a comic, 
and the comic kind of goes back and forth between your comic and of the Watchmen, and it's actually kind of telling another story through another meaning of what's happening in the Watchmen, and it's amazing. And the thing is, it completely had to be cut for the film. It couldn't fit, which unfortunately was one of the one of the very many amazing things about the comic itself. So what they ended up doing was making an animated version of the Black Freighter. But the thing is, in my opinion, what's great about the Black Freighter is how it intertwines so well. It's not that great of a story by itself. Now, I've heard they've made larger DVDs that are very long that basically takes this animated thing that they did and intertwines it with this and makes one giant film, which I haven't seen it. Honestly, I haven't seen it. But from seeing this and seeing this, it has a chance of being very well done, but the thing is, it's not going to be done as well as the comic. I already know that. It physically can't. Like I said, the panels just do not translate to time. So, in terms of going to the film itself, as I said, there's a huge time disadvantage, but the thing is, the actors actually did really well. I think the designs were pretty nicely done. It's filmed very well. It has some really interesting bits where um, the uh, over-the-top comic action plays into it. The color is actually replicated pretty nicely. As I was saying, the color was really interesting in the book. It's really nice as well, and kind of referencing that in the DVD. And the movie as well, the, it actually is referencing the plot so closely, it's almost reading it like a script. Now obviously it has to jump and cut through a lot of stuff to be able to get through the story on time. And it does a pretty good job of doing that with the time given. Now the thing is, this obviously is going to be a different amount of time. If I could find that, that'd be fantastic, but it's, uh, they love hiding it in different places every time, but either way, whatever. So, in terms of the content, it does cut a lot out, and I would definitely not recommend watching this first. If you want to get into The Watchmen, or if you are really interested in it, you're like, I, I know it's really big, I know it's, it's something, but the thing is, I heard too much bad stuff about it. And the thing is, what's really interesting is that character who people apparently in the theaters were complaining, oh, this is the blue penis, I don't want to look at a blue penis. He actually ended up being one of the coolest characters, I think, in the entire comic. And one of the best scenes of the comic, my absolute favorite issue of that comic, was cut out of the film, because it was translated into film, it was cut for the theatrical version, which I remember going through and watching it and just going, no! Because that had been after I'd read it, and I'd already been so attached to it, because it is, it is so, so amazing. You get so close to these characters and how they, how much they care, or what they're doing, or it, it's just fascinating how everything is intertwined, and everything is so carefully done that it is just, it, it's so difficult to translate these things into a film. Like, for example, there's a certain character who we get to know very well, who's basically a psychologist of another character who you're going to be re reading about. And they'll show up in the film, and they'll look dead on that character, and you go like, Oh, that guy! I know that guy! And they cut out. They cut over him. He's gone. Even the director's cut. They didn't have time for him. And you go, Oh, no, but it was, it was you. You looked perfect. You sounded perfect. You acted perfect for the two lines you had, but you're gone now. Oh, well. So I think even if you really enjoyed it, some people will go to this thinking, Ah, oh, it's, it's like everything I love about Watchmen, except sucking out some of the good stuff. And it's not all there. It's not the whole thing. And there is the obvious thing. <sighs> I didn't get to it yet. Towards the end of this, there is a uh, plot change for how the story basically plays out in the very end. And I can't, obviously, tell you how that works because I'm not going to spoil anything. But in one or the other, it, I feel like the comic makes perfect sense. I love the ending of the comic. This doesn't make sense. Now, it's similar. It's similar. But it doesn't actually make sense, in my opinion. Now, I'm not really gonna... I'm not gonna go into that in the video, because I'm not gonna spoil anything for people. But the thing is, that might have been another thing that set people off. If you think too much about this ending, it doesn't really work. And things go back to normal. Well, everything was bad. It doesn't really work. For the comic, everything actually worked out. I can't tell you anything more about that! I want to so badly! And uh, maybe if someone asks me specifically in a comment if they're s really serious about it, um, I'm going to say uh, you guys can let the comments have their spoilers if you want to. Talk about everything down there. And if you don't want to be spoiled, don't go down there if you don't want to. But the thing is, you can ask me anything. I will answer for you as honestly as I can. And honestly, this is a really good film. I really enjoy this film. 
But the problem is, it is not the comic. And it can't be the comic. And if you really want to enjoy Watchmen to the fullest, you have to read that comic, or just find the motion comic, and you could really just watch it um, by the issue. Each issue, there's 12 of these episodes, which are basically an animated issues. And you can just kind of like watch one every like day or so, and that's one way to get through it. And honestly, that's not a bad way to do it at all, because the comic translates really well to this. But the thing is, it's still just not quite as good a version as this is. And this, as I said, is just truly amazing. I can't say that much more about it. It's just fantastic. Now, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about about The Watchmen before I ended this video, and that is the new line that DC had been putting out called Before Watchmen. They went out and uh, started assigning different uh, really popular writers and artists to do basically prequel series of specific characters that will appear in this. And the thing is, in my opinion, I haven't read it, so I can't really be that biased to it, but the reason I haven't read it is because, to me, this is complete. It doesn't need prequels. The best part about The Watchmen, to me, is that there is nothing more. There is so much packed in here that I imagine the rest of it. I don't need to see it. If I saw it, it this becomes kind of pointless. It's like expanding a universe. You don't do that to this. And it's kind of hard to explain that to some people, because obviously those might be written very well, and I imagine they would be because they got very good writers for them. But the thing is, this, if you really understand this, and if you really read this, this doesn't need anything else. Now the thing is, DC owned it and obviously wanted to make a lot more money off of it, and they did. They made a lot more money off of doing the Before Watchmen stuff, but the thing is, I can't really get into it because I know they did it for money, and the thing is, I don't want any more, because to me, this is perfect. It seriously is. If I can say any graphic novel is perfect, as in I can't find any flaws in it, this is perfect. This is one of the best, if not the best, comic I have ever read. It is amazing. It's truly amazing. If that is not enough for you guys, then I don't know what is. If anything, you can find this for super cheap, so just like a couple bucks. Just watch that. If you don't like it, then hey, whatever, you at least tried it and you're going to have a better opinion and you can't just say, oh, well, I heard it was bad, you know, you can't say that anymore because it truly is an amazing experience. Really pay attention, really try and figure out everything about this. You can watch this, read this as many times as you can humanly try and you will find new things in it every time. It is that deep. There's so much work put into it. It is amazing. There is a reason that Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons are credited with so much work put into this because it is a phenomenal comic. All right, I'm gonna stop raving about all this. I understand, basically, you guys are more than likely going to give it a shot. And um, if there's any other things you want me to talk about about The Watchmen, let me know down in the comments. And just remember to like the videos and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next comic book review video.